Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at subsets and how the corresponding infimums and supremums of these sets are organized relative to each other. This problem is exercise 1.1.4, which can be found in your free online real analysis textbook. And I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. So let's start with our assumptions in this proof. Okay, so let S be an ordered set. Let B be a subset of S, be bounded both above and below. Let A be a subset of B, be a non-empty subset. And suppose that all of the infimums and the supremums exist. Now, we're going to work through proving this inequality one at a time. We're going to start with this inequality on the left here. So right now, we're just focusing on proving that statement. Now, to prove this statement, we're going to assume that the infimum of B is actually greater than the infimum of A. Or, written differently, the infimum of A is less than the infimum of B. So what does that mean? Well, the infimum of B is a lower bound to B. And so every element in B is at least as large as this infimum of B here. Now, my goal is to come up with a contradiction somehow, because I'm assuming the opposite of the thing I'm trying to prove, which is supposed to be problematic somehow. Now, since A is not empty, then there is an A that's inside my set A. Well, since A is a subset of B, then A is in B. And since A is in B, then the infimum of B has to be less than or equal to A, since the infimum of B is a lower bound to B, meaning that it's less than or equal to every element in B. Now, I picked an arbitrary element in A here and showed that the infimum of B is less than or equal to that arbitrary element that I picked from A. So this is actually, this statement right here is true for every element A that I pick. So to clarify, that means for all elements in A, the infimum of B is less than or equal to A. Well, that means that the infimum of B is a lower bound of A. So since the infimum of B is a lower bound of A, then it has to be less than or equal to the greatest lower bound of A. So then the infimum of B is less than or equal to the greatest lower bound of A, which specifically is called the infimum of A. But this is where the contradiction comes in because we assume that the infimum of A is less than the infimum of B, and that clearly contradicts that. Now, I'm going to do a quick shortcut here, but I'll explain the shortcut. Technically, we proved that this inequality holds. This inequality right here is pretty much the same proof that we just did, but we flip all the inequality symbols, we switch some letters and flip the imps to soups, and pretty much everything's the same. Now we still have one more inequality to show here, and that's specifically this one, that the infimum of A is less than or equal to the supremum of A. Why is that true? Well, let's assume the opposite and see if we can get to a logical contradiction. Now, since A is non-empty, that means that A has an element. Now, the supremum of A is an upper bound to A. So, A is less than or equal to this upper bound right here. It's also the least upper bound, but it's an upper bound still. And A is greater than or equal to the infimum of A. Why is that? Well, the infimum of A is a lower bound, meaning that it's less than or equal to every element in A. 
This means that the infimum of A is less than or equal to A, which is also less than or equal to the supremum of A. So that means the infimum of A is less than or equal to the supremum of A, which is our contradiction, because we assumed that the infimum of A is greater than the supremum of A. And so that proves every inequality that we were trying to show. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.